Bill W. thought that not being anonymous was what Hitler's war was about. And instead of the sacrifice and humility of practicing anonymity, Bill thought that Hitler's goal was, quote, the disastrous pursuit of personal power and prestige, close quote, and the improper seeking of, quote, unquote, public honors. Along these lines, Heidegger wrote, the concealing of the concealed being as a whole holds sway in that disclosure of specific beings which, as forgottenness of concealment, becomes errancy. On the Essence of Truth, Section 7. Bill W. knew that AA was about self-government, and people were eager to know the AA rules, so instead of repeating the same advice over and over, Bill W. wrote it all down on paper, and what he had first called the Twelve Points became the Twelve Traditions. There were two kinds of people to watch in AA, those who made it and those who didn't. In February of 1937, there had been twelve AA members in Akron, and by November, they had increased to 40 members, and in the fall of 1937, Bill W. and Dr. Bob realized that they'd started a chain reaction. In June of 1941, the Serenity Prayer showed up in an obituary in the newspaper, and the members adopted it as particularly applicable to drunks, and by 1944, there were 360 AA groups with a membership of over 10,000 sober souls. Dr. Bob's cancer would be discovered in 1948, and he would be dead two years later, and three different doctors had failed to diagnose his, diagnose his prostate cancer, which just so happens to be the keystone philosophy of Alcoholics Anonymous, in that we cannot but fail to see our own disease except as reflected in the members of the group. For the last two years of his life, Dr. Bob went around drinking his morphine from a little bottle they used to let people carry home with them. And when Dr. Bob died, he'd been sober for 15 years, and for five of those years, he'd been sick. Dr. Bob gave his last speech in July of 1950 at the first international convention in Cleveland. And Dr. Bob said that AA boils down to two things, love and service and then he stopped going to meetings at King's School and stayed home so Emma could give him morphine shots. Emma finally got Dr. Bob to watch television, and he liked it a lot, especially the college wrestling, and Dr. Bob smoked cigarettes to the very end. Dr. Bob said that you had to sponsor yourself every, every now and then, and after Bob died, Bill W. began writing the 12 by 12, and it would be published in 1953 and quickly sold 50,000 copies. When the 12 traditions had been adopted at the AA convention in 1950, Bill W. had been warning, the group, warning that groups could quickly become, quote, a drinker's club, a hospital, a bank, or a nursery, close quote. Pass it on, page 225. And by 1951, there had been 112,000 members in over 4,000 groups, and all delegates to the next convention were seated by 1952. At the second international convention held in St. Louis in July of 1955, there were over 130,000 members belonging to 6,000 groups. And Suzanne said they had a social hour before dinner where there was a real table there was a table of real drinks at one end and soft drinks at the other. For two years before and after Hitler's war, Bill W. had suffered from burdensome depression. Burdensome depression. So he'd cut his sugar consumption by two-thirds and it helped a little. And the doctor gave him thyroid hormone and it cheered him up. And Bill also got B12 shots and other hormone shots and he got sold on niacin for a while, but he wouldn't be relieved of the depression until he would design a service structure for AA that allowed him to step aside. Bill W.'s idea of putting AA into the hands of a conference was always meant to protect the sovereignty of the individual drunk, the sovereignty of the individual drunk, lest any self-deluded authority make the mistake of thinking they had any power over the individual alcoholic's personal relationship with God as he reveals himself. 
After 1955, the year he declared AA of age, pronounced the service structure complete and turned the fellowship over to its members, he was free of depression. Pass it on, page 303. The year AA came of age in 1955. Dora Goldstein turned mice into alcoholics at Stanford University by pumping alcohol fumes into their boxes, and they became addicted in four days and had convulsions when the alcohol was stopped and she showed that their cells had adapted to the presence of alcohol and so the AMA recognized alcoholism as a disease that year in 1955, the same year the Urantia book was published, although it was considered more of an illness rather than a disease because medical insurance billing had not yet gotten in the way of the right to privacy between a doctor and his patient. Al-Anon started in 1951 and Alateen in 1957, and Bill wrote the chapter Two Wives, even though many thought it had been Lois, and the GSB in Britain was born that year in 1957, when there were 7,000 groups worldwide hosting 200,000 members. These people were not strangers to me at all. It seems as if I had known and trusted and loved them all my life. I'd felt that way about my AA group at home, but now I felt the same way about every AA and all of AA. I can't tell you what this meant. To me, it was big. This was real brotherhood. These were my people, my kin and my kind. I belonged to them and they belonged to me. Every barrier, every thought of race, creed or nationality dropped out of my mind. This tremendous thing happened to me in only a few hours. AA comes of age, page 42. The Berlin Wall went up in the summer of 1961 after the trial of Adolf Eichmann got underway in Jerusalem in April, and the Twelve Concepts were adopted in 1962 just as the Chinese were getting ready to fire off their first atomic bomb, and Ken Kesey's One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest was becoming wildly popular just as the California Supreme Court ruled that it was not a crime to be addicted to narcotics, and hippies from around the world began flooding into the Golden State. The Deep State killed Kennedy in 1963 for letting pot-smoking women swim naked in the White House pool, and that year the song I Want to Hold Your Hand sold 13 million copies and John Lennon would be shot to death 17 years later. The 30th Anniversary International AA Convention was held in Toronto, Canada in 1965 and they voted to accept the Responsibility Declaration and by 1967 one-fifth of AAs were meeting overseas. The Declaration of Responsibility was, I am responsible. When anyone anywhere reaches out for help, I want the hand of AA always to be there and for that I am responsible. The first World Services meeting took place in 1969 on the 9th to the 11th of October in New York City, and the 35th anniversary convention was in Miami Beach in 1970, and that was Bill W.'s last appearance, and at that convention they approved the Declaration of Unity. Bill W. died on the 24th of January in 1971, and a memorial service was held for him on Valentine's Day on the 14th of February and one million big books would be sold by 1973. One AA said of Bill W. Bill is, an enor Bill is a man of enormous capacity of will. People think they understand what will is, but they don't know very well, and people vary in their endowment of will. They think it's puckering yourself up mentally or something, but it isn't. Will and intelligence come right off spirit. Pass it on, page 302. He was authentic and he was sincere, but you know there are sincere fools in the world. The field is crowded. This guy was right on balance on the spiritual stuff. He was the first crack in my armor. Authenticity was a big part of it. I saw he was sane and was for real. Pass it on, page 271. Bill W. had written, The spiritual substance of anonymity is sacrifice. 
Because AA's 12 traditions repeatedly ask us to give up personal desires for the common good, we realize that the sacrificial spirit, well symbolized by anonymity, is the foundation of them all. It is AA's proved willingness to make these sacrifices that gives people their high confidence in our future. Pass it on, page 308. Bill W. had started the first paragraph of the fifth chapter of AA Comes of Age, a chapter entitled Religion Looks at Alcoholics Anonymous, with The Society of Alcoholics Anonymous is spiritually as well as morally centered. Nearly every AA member comes to believe in and depend upon a higher power, which most of us call God. In AA, practically no full recovery from alcoholism has been possible without this all-important faith. God, as we understand him, is the foundation upon which our fellowship rests. A Comes of Age, page 253. The original language in the requirement for membership asked for a quote-unquote honest desire to stop drinking, but they thought the word honest smacked too much of religion, so they took it out, although they kept using the word purity even longer. And then the Catholics asked for a second look at, quote, found heaven right here on earth, close quote, and changed it to finding utopia right here on earth. Many of the first stories were rejected for talking too much about God. And Bill W.'s original version had been, quote, We prayed to whatever God we thought there was for power to practice these precepts. Close quote. Pass it on. Page 197. Members were taught to seek faith and also to seek experience through works. And instead of asking God to, quote, please remove this fear, close quote, they were taught to pray, quote, thank you for courage, strength, and direction, close quote. Slogans abounded, having been carried along from the Oxfordters, among which were such gems as, Love doesn't need to think, anger does. An abuse had come on the market in 1949, and on the 29th of August in 1956, Bill W. had taken LSD at the LAVA, and he did it several times over the next three years, and then... Bill had gone back to buying and selling stock on Wall Street. In April of 1966, the General Service Board changed from having an 8 to 7 ratio of non-alcoholics to alcoholics, and the alcoholics won their two-thirds majority. And before Bill W. died at the age of 75, in January of 1971, alcoholism was seen as not merely a search for a relationship with God, but also a quest for finding the true brotherhood of man.